N95 filtering face piece respirators or N95 masks are vital for protecting both medical workers and the general public during the COVID-19 pandemic. As such, it is essential for us to understand how it works and how we can better design processes to protect more people from potential infection. One way to achieve this is to extend the reusable lifespans of masks currently in distribution. This is vital in order to free up supply of new masks that can be distributed to communities at risk, as well as to other parts of the world that urgently need protection. Equipping as many individuals with masks as soon as possible would alleviate rates of infections and buy valuable time for effective vaccines to be developed in order to protect the general public. In this video, we will explore the possibility of reusing these masks in order to alleviate global supply shortage during times of crisis. We believe our quantitative analysis on the results will provide valuable insights on the best ways to sterilize and safely reuse N95 respirators in non-sophisticated and cost-effective ways. We hope the study will promote cross-applications of dedicated tools developed in other fields such that researchers and product developers alike can benefit from the accumulated knowledge and collaborative cooperation of the wider scientific community to fight future virus threat. Before diving in, let's first discuss what does N and 95 mean. The letter N represents the degree of resistance to oil. N refers to non-resistant. The number followed in the letter represents the filtration efficiency. This efficiency is typically measured using standard particle references. With particle diameters of about 0.3 micron are commonly used. So 95 means that the N95 mask filters at least 95% of the 0.3 micrometer aerosols. Interestingly, collection efficiencies vary as a function of particle size. And 0.3 micrometer particle sizes are the most challenging to filter as they lie within a slightly difficult to capture middle range. Larger particles can be stopped by filter fibers through inertial impaction and interception. Conversely, smaller particles are constantly bombarded by air molecules, causing them to deviate from their path of travel and be captured by the filter fiber. Another way particles are captured within the filter networks are through electrostatic forces of attraction. Such a capture mechanism is independent of particle size and proved to be crucial in improving the collection efficiency. Now to the structure of N95 masks. N95 mask consists of three main layers, the shell, the filter layers, and the cover wrap. The filter layer is made up of non-woven microfibers, such as polypropylene and polyester. These microfibers are imparted with electrostatic charges during production and is the primary reason for the mask's higher filtration efficiency. Conventionally, N95 masks are designed for single use and need to be discarded. However, during the COVID-19 pandemic, the world faced a severe shortage of N95 masks for frontline medical workers, prompting researchers to study the possibility of reusing these N95 masks the proposed strategies for sterilization include using dry heat, steaming, hydroperoxide, or ultraviolet light, making it safe once again for reuse. Masks are typically assessed for their filtration efficiency, pressure drop, airflow resistance, and how thoroughly virus or germs are inactivated during disinfection processes. A Stanford research team found 
a simple and equally effective decontamination method, just heating. Under hot air processing at 75 degrees Celsius for 30 minutes, the masks were found to be sterilized with limited degradation in its filtration efficiency. However, it is important to note that the heating needs to be done under dry air conditions. Steam treatment or any process involving moisture will cause the filtration efficiency to drop to about 80% and below. Likewise, use of organic solvents such as ethanol or isopropanol damages inanifal masks and is not advisable. In our lab, we expanded on this work and found that dry heat treatment at 70 and 90 degrees Celsius with just one cycle has negligible impact on the microfibers morphology. With repeated thermal cycles, also doesn't cause significant morphological changes to the microfibers. However, dry heat at 150 degrees Celsius for 30 minutes was found to induce unfavorable microfiber cleavage, likely due to the low melting points of polymetric fibers used. In terms of the electrostatic properties retention, dipolar charge density decreases by about 42% after one thermal cycle at 70 degrees Celsius and 44% after five cycles. After 10 thermal cycles at 70 degrees Celsius, dipolar charge density is only at 24% of its original state and will likely lose almost all of its electrostatic charges if treated at 150 degrees Celsius. In conclusion, while we can certainly retain most of the N95 mask filtration property after one sterilization process, effectiveness starts to drop dramatically if repeatedly used and re-sterilized. Future mask designs can incorporate either improved durability of the dipolar charge density with improved material selection, or redesign masks to allow for interchangeability of the electrostatic filter layer, keeping the rest of the mask intact for reuse. We hope you've enjoyed this short sharing of material scientists' perspective on N95 mask reusability. We would also like to thank our founding sources and collaborators for their efforts toward this research as well as their commitment to work with us remotely during this challenging social distancing period.